how to use layer masks in Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is get the images I want in my document. I went to File, Place, Embedded. There are multiple ways to get multiple photographs in Photoshop. You can drag and drop them in your document. You can copy and paste them within the document. You can file place them. And there are different ways and different types of files to use. Today I want to use embedded files so that they're forever linked within my document. So I don't have any issues with files being moved and Photoshop not being able to find them. So I went File, Place, Embedded. When I place a picture, it allows me to resize it and move it at that exact point. So you get the anchor points and the resize box around the picture. And if you um, like the size that you've made it and you want to keep the changes, you click the check mark in the options bar. So now I'm going to go place my second picture. I went File, Place Embedded. Got it how I like it. I click the check mark or I click on a different tool. I'm going to place the third one. So you can place multiple files at once if they're in a row or all in the same folder. Mine were kind of spread out within this folder of images, so I'm placing them one at a time. The next step is to apply a layer mask to remove the background. This is called non-destructive editing, when we hide pixels instead of truly deleting them. So I'm going to use the feature today in Photoshop where it does most of the work for us. It's called Select Subject. Photoshop does a pretty good job of selecting the pixels that you want of the subject and not the background. As long as the object is a different color than the background. My next step is to apply a layer mask. Go to Layer. The mask I selected will reveal the area of the picture that I have selected. So what Photoshop is doing is applying a mask on top of my photograph wherever they place uh, white it will make the picture show up wherever we paint black it will make the picture pixels be hidden so think of a Halloween mask where part of the mask shows part of your face and part hides part of your face so that's what we're essentially doing here we're hiding pixels we're not deleting them so what I'm playing with now is I am uh, trying to change how smooth or rough the edge of my selection is. So Photoshop did a pretty good job. I went back to layer, layer mask, reveal selection. As we can see, it hid the background, the blue part behind the parrot. As we can also see is I will have some cleanup work to do because the edge of my selection needs a little work. So I've clicked on the second layer. I'm going to click Select Subject. This time Photoshop doesn't really do quite as good a job selecting what I want because this parrot, the foot is kind of tan color and the background is kind of tan. So it has a hard time deciphering what to select and what not to select. But I can add to my selection by using the Quick Selection tool, which is what I am doing here. I can change the size of my brush to include parts that I want and if I select too much I go to the minus brush and I'm getting rid of the pixels I don't want selected. So this can be rather tedious if you have a very complicated shape that is very similar color to your background. Now that I have what I want selected I'm ready to add my mask. I'm going to go to layer Layer Mask, Reveal Selection. Photoshop automatically adds a layer mask in my layers palette and paints black over the top of the background. 
and white where my subject is. I'm moving my layers in the order that I want. Now we're working on this pink parrot. And the next thing I need to do is select my subject. Whoops, wrong layer. I need to be on the right layer. Try this again. Select subject. Looks pretty good. I do want to add the branch that this parrot is standing on. So I'm going to go to my quick selection tool again and make sure I'm on the plus tool. And I'm going to add a little bit more to what's selected. Now I'm going to go to layer, layer mask, reveal selection. All right, so now I have all three of my objects cropped out. I can now resize them, transform them, modify them however I want. The most common um, transform tool that I use is free transform. So I want to edit, free transform. What that allows me to do is rotate and scale an image at the same time. If I like my selection and what I've done, I can click the check mark in the options bar or simply click on another tool and it will apply the changes. I'm saving my file here because I've done a lot of work and I don't want to lose anything. And this is just a trick I learned a long time ago. When I'm making a collage or doing very detailed selections, what I will do is add a blank layer and I will add a really bright color that is easy for me to see. This allows me to see pixels that were missed in the cropping and cleanup and that way I can quickly see them to allow me to do some cleanup work. So I'm going to paint yellow and if I zoom in real quick you can see that on the first parrot that I worked on I need to really do some ed work here. So there's several different ways you can accomplish this. Today I'm going to continue my work on the layer mask to show you how you can do this yourself. So I need a paintbrush, and I like to use a soft edge paintbrush. It's kind of like an airbrush, like a spray paint can. And I need to have the color black on my paintbrush, because if I have white, what it's gonna do is reveal more of the background. So I picked me a brush, and now I'm going to very carefully and slowly take my time and airbrush away those green pixels that I don't want to show up. So let's just say in the middle of this I have to sneeze or someone next to me bumps the table and I really mess up. Oh snap, I messed up. Well, with using layer masks and non-destructive editing, this is an easy fix. All I have to do is switch my paint color back to white and I can paint back the area that I accidentally hid. You can also do Command Z on your keyboard or go to the history palette and undo your last few steps. Thanks for watching.